And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Starborn Connection Radio. Uh, we're here tonight with Julia. Julia, how are you? I'm doing great, Mike. Good. And and our producer, Bill Skywatcher. Bill, what's good, going on? Good evening, Michael and Julia. How are you guys tonight? Great. I'm great. Um, we also have a great guest tonight, good friend of mine, Laura Eisenhower. I want to read a little bio uh, now, and then I want to go into some uh, important stuff that I got from our friends in Czechoslovakia uh, regarding Oli. uh, Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, Our guest tonight, Laura Eisenhower, beautiful person. Laura is an intuitive astrologist, a global alchemist, cosmic mythologist, and is the great-granddaughter of Dwight David Eisenhower. She is on a profound mission to reveal our true origins connected with the Magdalene and Gaia Sophia energies of love and wisdom and works to liberate us from the military industrial complex, which uh, her great grandfather spoke about in some detail, uh, warning us that mm -hmm, that was that was the monster we had to watch out for. Uh, Laura is with us tonight. Just We're just going to have a nice chat, talk a little bit about uh, whatever she wants to talk about. I'm sure there's a, a lot of information that she wants to talk about. I hope so. Um, Laura, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are you doing, Michael? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good, too. I, I'm kind of like uh, up a tree with this stuff. I don't know. Uh, I want you to hear what our alien friends have to say now it's uh once again for the audience too this is translated from uh the uh alien oli into czechoslovakia into czech language then it's uh transferred back into english so sometimes you know the meanings are a little uh, misconstrued and uh we're told <laughs> we're told when when we do it so uh, we're trying our best to get the message across. Um, last week, if you recall, uh, we were supposed to have a little break-in uh, with Oli. He was going to send us a little signal by breaking into our broadcast. Well, things weren't right. Uh, there, there are a lot of problems that were preventing uh, them from doing that. Number one, uh, Bill, if you have any... Uh, cameras or anything going or, or uh, recorders remember we you had your uh, yes. video out yeah 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 and we're up um, again tonight by the way uh videos out tonight no we've got video oh. tonight beautiful, beautiful. and okay. michael i'm just getting information from someone in my youtube chat that ilona is going to be joining them in my youtube chat oh my goodness that's great mm-hmm. wow. yeah i just cool. got just got done talking with her uh, on the, uh, the the messenger, uh, I, I actually sent her a message uh, to have her sister Ilona pass on. You know, if I if I came off uh, in a bold way, you know, I apologize. It's just exciting to know that you know we're kind of like communicating with with people from somewhere else. I mean, it's really great, yeah. spectacular, actually. Anyway. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but uh, the latest communication with Oli um, at one point was taken over by the commander of the ship. Uh, he's a, a non-human intelligent being named Katama, K-A-T-A-M-A. He seemed a little bit annoyed uh, that uh, now, I mean, and he's talking about Americans. We Americans need verification of the aliens' existence. His, his response was not anger. I had the feeling he was trying to explain that they need to be unrecognized 
uh, and that still cameras and video recorders are dangerous and damaging to their energy. Um, we need to eliminate those items. Oli says uh, that they are demigods, and, and they and, and a demigod is is half divine, half human, or whatever uh, species that that these guys are. Um, so let's see. Uh, they respect us. They really do. But it works both ways. You know, we lack the understanding of the process of contact. Oli tells us that. Uh, Earthmen are a component of the material phase. Uh, we are we're Earthmen, and that that's where we're at material-wise. And we have material laws. And and I'm not sure whether he meant we create laws for social control or physical quote unquote physics laws. Um, it would be dangerous for us. Let's put it that way. If they were to show us more. He also said that we worry too much about, you know, contact and are they real? They cannot be influenced, he said. He says that's due to two entities. Now, there's two people, entities that manipulate the fluctuations of their understanding system, not being able to translate and talk about them properly. They would abuse it for the media. Oli tells us he avoids the media who are listening in, he says, two, yes, two people are really like taking advantage of these readings, and it's not supposed to happen. He says, we do not emphasize names, but these two people, mm, look out. Um, we questioned, why did you not show up? And this is Ali, uh, you know, we meaning us. We questioned, why did you not show up somehow or give us a sound? He said, it already happened, but you have not been prepared. And we are waiting for people to be prepared. Uh, the message goes on further. He says, on the radio in the USA, we were looking for a message from the ship about our association. Now, now I think Oli felt like we did not ask very good questions i think you know all we wanted to know was you know what's the answer to this physical uh law and uh you know how do we make this kind of energy give us the blueprints for this machine uh you know what is that about um and then he goes on to address ilona and ivana directly you know ivana and ilona people do not like you very much there is much shallowness and superiority we sent energy beams to the radio every time they talked about us. They read little in information about us. Now, he mentions me. Michael Melton previously liked the pipe. And if if you recall last week, they asked if, if I smoked a pipe or if I ever did. And I'm not really sure what relevance that has. Um, but then he says, people are exploring you, which, uh, you know, kind of went gave me a little creepiness there but uh, I don't know um, we will not manifest before such a poorly developed etheric energy source we do not like the cameras again they weaken our ship and our message of energy we know what people say about us we keep all of this in our records who is most expecting us there we are afraid to enter pretty neat statement there you know the people who are clamoring to, you know, hear or see or, or try to believe if we're not alone, they're the ones that they avoid. Um, we must talk. We, all these talking about him now. He and his commander must tolerate the tasks ourselves. We were not able to establish contact due to the technical equipment, which was poorly installed. They wrote they did not have superb technical equipment. And I think I'm a little embarrassed. They were talking about my computer, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. There is yeah. a little problem with the sound. Oh, my goodness. And, and I went out and bought a brand new IBM uh, Lenovo Think Center thing here. And I think it's working OK. And I hope it continues to. All right. He, been, he continues. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. We are not demons. We know what Ilona thought today, and, and she t texted me and said, you know, he must be a demon because he didn't come through. That's fascinating. Oh, wow. Um, isn't that neat? 
Um, we know her thoughts. We are of the 12th dimension, and it is not our task to listen to someone. All you have to do is open your consciousness by your heart. For us, is it, for us, it is important. Deeds are more important. Uh, deeds which aren't um, accelerated. I'm not sure what he means by that. Maybe, you know, done in haste just to get approval. Um, a lot of people are lying. Yes, everything will be. Just cannot nobody speed in this time. In other words, you know, I, I think what he means is let's not rush mm -hmm. to judgment or, or, you know, rush to get in contact. Now, I want to read a little bit about uh, Commander Katama here. Um, he says, now here entered Commander Katama. I took over the communication now. Uh, energy, American people, and governments. Oli is the mediator between me and Ivana. I am the commander of our ship. The total crew is five in our ship now, and we are capturing your energy strike, which has a negative income for our identity. And then he repeats, we are the demigods. I took over Oli's assignment. Oh, he is insecure in his position here on Earth due to identity of Ivana. In other words, Ivana is known. Uh, Oli takes his task that cannot be given to you, which you want. In other words, Oli really wanted to do this, I think. Um, but uh, once again, Kitama says there is a time order in everything. Everything has its own degree of values both earthly as well as our own values. They are given by the process of evolution. You cannot influence our system just because you want some proof. You have your planet Earth, and we are navigated through a dimensional program toward Ivana and a few other individuals as we want to spread our message, which is a given. It must not be abused. We are demigods, and demigods should not be disrespected. All demigods are from other dimensions. We cannot do what others want us to do. We will show ourselves and will show our strength in another project and at another time, regardless of American people who ask for something which is not possible to be made as fast as possible. My friend Oli is confused. His task was handed over to me. Oli has to follow my standpoint. Uh, Oli argues that if people believe our civilization, they have to look at heaven with their hearts and not with mood and stimulation, such as a fake smile and a sensation of jokes. Um, I'll stop there because it, it goes on a little further, uh, but it kind of says a little bit about what Oli said. Uh, Oli seems like a pretty nice guy. I mean, you know, when you think about it, he wanted to do this. Uh, Commander probably said, look, you know... <laughs> A little bit too much there. Uh, we, we can't do that yet. So, very interesting. Uh, any comments, people? I'm not feeling the demigod thing. I think uh, we, we shall not be disrespected. That rubs me the wrong way. Really? How, feeling, how so? How so? Um, people, well, you know, spiritual beings that are for the ascension process and for the human race joining them in love and peace and the whole fifth dimensional ascension thing. Um, there is no difference in rank. Like even the archangels don't feel they're better than us. They feel they're just different. They just have different roles. Right. So unless the translation was a little bit different, um, you know, maybe they didn't mean it that way. Maybe they meant it like, okay, um, you know, they don't want to be forced to do anything because they know when it's the correct time. There's so many agencies that are watching out for them and the people they contact, so they want to keep it safe. Maybe that's what they meant. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not feeling like if that was the actual translation – it sounds like we shall not be disrespected. That's not you well. Know. I'll tell you, it's not. It's not us. Basically, there are 
I, I know of uh, two people uh, and maybe a couple of others out there that are connected that are pressuring Ilona to send them copies of these transcripts. Oh, I see. And, you know, that's not what they want. You know, yeah. they don't want this stuff to be out. So, you know, I think that there are some others that are disrespecting. And I think that's the message uh, they want to get out to him or her. Right. And the, him, and, and whoever the, it is. And the thing, okay. Michael, we have to always be cautious because, you know, in the current state and everything that's going on mm. with, with the release of the DOD, there's a lot of fear mongering going on labeling these entities as evil and i'm not saying this specific species right. oli but in general oh yeah yeah no i i have that uh, i see that clearly on i'm writing uh, the chapter and i see that very clearly yeah and i i'm a believer that there is a balance in the universe just like there is here on earth between good and evil i believe it also exists throughout the universe and we're dealing with probably multiple species that are possibly oh, i'm sure so it, 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 we have to be mindful, of course, and cautious of the possibility that we may be engaging with an entity that may be benevolent or malevolent in nature. We just don't mm. know. Or in the middle. Probably or in, in the middle. middle. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But, but I don't want to be persons to demonize because we're hearing a lot of the negative aspect right now uh, throughout ufology, uh, specifically dealing with the, uh, the aerial phenomenal threat even though they mm. don't call it uh, alien in nature, but by the people that are behind this campaign, they believe that these entities are malevolent in nature mm, and yeah. they are evil. And you know that in the event that there is disclosure and we do have direct contact, you know there's going to be a lot of people oh, in, yeah, in sure. regarding sure. Uh, religious institutions that they're going to say it's demonic in nature. So I'm Of course. That's the yeah. that's the thing we need to be really careful because we can misinterpret it and jump to conclusions and not to know right. the true intention because communication is going to be essential and it's not going to be like a movie like we see in Hollywood. It, oh this, no, 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 no. You know, it, the, maybe uh, yeah. the best example was the uh, the movie the the signal or uh, the movie that was out re uh, last year. Um it's, it's going to be very complex and it's going to take a lot of dedicated scientists to really form a real uh, communication with this species. But you know, in the interim, people are going to go absolutely bonkers from all different angles. And that's what we need to be careful about because mm. we, you know, we just don't know. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hear from the, uh, the, uh, the person who really has a lot of experience Indeed. there. Uh, Laura, what's your what, what what are you feeling? What do you think about all this? Oh, I just have a question about uh, the insecurity factor. Uh, something about this being saying how they are identifying the human experience that there is some sort of insecurity about somebody's role. Can you kind of clarify what that was all about? Because that was sort of interesting. Uh, <laughs> insecurity. Um, let's see. Is that Ollie that was insecure? I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, yeah. The, the the commander of the ship was saying that uh, Oli, who is the person that communicates, uh, I think what he was trying to say is is that he really is trying to uh, please us by by saying yes, we we can break into your show, and you know the commander is saying. You know, he's a little bit insecure in his position because he thinks he can uh, give more than than we really can at this time. Gotcha. That, yeah, that's what I understood. Well, mm -hmm. what, what's your opinion about that? What is happening here with this? Uh, you know, these girls uh, are ladies now. I have been uh, communicating with this entity since uh, 1994, I believe. And uh, it's it's been a steady thing for them. They they have actually written a book with uh, the translations in it from all from the past. But um, I don't know. What did what did you hear in all of that? Uh, you know, in 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 term in terms of sincerity, in terms of you know, are these are these guys up there looking down? You know, sending us messages, stuff like that. Well, to me, it's almost like uh, a download one would get from their higher self, mm -hmm. um, some sort of communication with 
that level of our uh, conscious awareness that exists in, you know, the 12th dimension. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, that's just sort of the way I in, in, interpret most contact experiences is that it's, it's a part of ourselves sort of communicating with us or a part of um, a frequency of energy or a vibration that we're connecting into to, uh, you know, be able to maybe integrate it into our physical lifestyle and our physical bodies in order to, um, you know, upgrade ourselves. And there are key words to watch out for, you know, if there's any form of control or, um, and I, I, I don't think ego is bad. Um, but, you know, just like I, I, Julia was saying, just this demigod thing, and maybe that was the translation, um, uh, that identification aspect, not that ego is a negative thing, but a 12th dimensional energy is very much the fullness and wholeness of our full DNA capacity in like a physical human vessel. Um, and I mean, I think there's things there that might slip out of maybe that full on avatar consciousness, which the 12th dimension represents, mm -hmm. uh, because even if we have a capacity to have a 12th dimensional consciousness, we're still experiencing other levels of our being. So I, 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 I can imagine that they are able to exist in that particular dimension, but are they always holding in consciousness of that dimension? Um, I mean, that, that's a question for all sorts of different races and beings out there. Um, and I don't think, you know, a particular dimensional energy, you know, has to look like this or this is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're embodying anything or you're a part of anything, you're also you're also including the other dimensional frequencies as well. Correct. Correct. And so what I'm just getting is that um, this being, you know, can reach that totality of, of consciousness, but maybe isn't always maintaining a mastery level of knowing necessarily what to do with it and how to deal with it when dealing with, you know, humans that have been compromised to a much lesser degree. Cause that's asking right. for a whole other form of mastery when you're starting to try and figure out <laughs> what are you going to say to these guys? <laughs> what are you that's gonna amazing. That, that whole statement is amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. That makes sense. I've heard that before that, uh, when people channel, they're actually channeling their higher self uh, mm -hmm. aspects of their being. And uh, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. that is interesting. And, and we can also, you know, experience, um, you know, when we experience lower levels of ourselves, they might come in the form of, you know, predatory humans or abusers. Um, so we have that sort of inner and outer thing. I don't think everything's an exact mirror. Some things are really there to trigger our growth. And our awareness um, in order to, you know, sort of turn the lights on or show us a red flag or a warning. Um, but I think it's a really good sign if anybody is connecting in with the 12th dimensional energy because, you know, ultimately they're connecting in with their own or else they probably wouldn't be able to perceive it. Right, right. Yeah, they, they um, I, I finally have this, oh, by the way, I, I finally have the spelling of their planet. And if anybody can say this, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a buck. Uh, <laughs> it's capital E L, small I E, capital L, small J, small I. That's their, that's their planet. L L G or L L E. Yeah. It depends. <laughs> I think it's Alilji. Alilji. Something like that. But it's real wow. interesting. Yeah, it is. Jeez, uh, you know, I, what the heck? I had a really good idea and it just slipped my mind. I, I am getting so old. My God. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Um, well, anyway, if, if it pops back into my head, I'll certainly ask it. But, Laura, what's been going on with you lately? How's everything going? Everything's going well. I just got back from Australia. Oh, mm, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a really powerful journey and trip. I did uh, two conferences there. Uh, and I've got, you know, some things in the works uh, in Hawaii coming up, which will be awesome with Joan Ocean. So, you know, really tapping into the cetacean, uh, higher dimensional uh, energies that come through, uh, you know, whales and dolphins. and Right. Uh, Australia was, yeah, really intense. Took me a little bit to bounce back. 
but yeah, I'm living in Montana and uh, really loving just the nature and the wilderness and and having a lot more downtime than I've ever had, which I've really needed. So, yeah, that sounds great. I mean, you've you've, you've posted some pictures of where you live. It looks it looks <laughs> delightfully wonderful. Yeah, there's a lot of really intense energy. I mean, it's very uh, pure energy, very uh, down to earth people too. And yeah, I'm really, you know, enjoying that and trying to finish my book and, you know, taking things to the next level, understanding this sort of new wave of ascension energy after the stellar activation cycle kind of came to a close. You know, there's no real ending to anything. It's always, you know, initiating a new birth of something. And uh, so the stellar activation cycle in the ascension window period has been considered between the dates 2000 and 2017. And here we are in the beginning of 2018. And it's not like the doorway is shut or the gates are closed and you either get it or you don't. It's, you know, there's new waves of activations coming in that I'm tuning into and trying to bring a voice to, um, you know, to continue the kind of work that I'm doing. Wow. (laughs) You sound like you're very busy, but you're visiting a lot of really nice places and, you know, taking some of that energy with you. Uh, It's... um, it's troubling this this day and age in the world to have to deal with stuff that we dealt with. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how old you are, Laura, but I'm 61, and I do remember um, the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis and uh, you know things like that. And and it, I got the feeling that the world is starting to come back to that kind of cycle where we have to deal with. Um, you know, the threat of nuclear devastation with uh, North Korea and uh, Russia is even supposedly getting into the game. I'm not trying to spread any rumors, but this is what is alluded to on the news, which I shouldn't listen to, but I do chronically, uh, you know. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, Where are the, we going? Yeah, well, a lot of, you know, the beings that people experience in abductions um you know, supposedly have been theorized as being future human selves that have been on that timeline of right, yeah, and you know the need to exit the planet to go underground or to go, you know, off into these colonies. But you know, we we change these timelines all the time. We experience other waves of dimensional energy through our own consciousness, and um, so I mean, it's a legitimate timeline, and I believe that we are witnessing uh, sort of crossroads of of many different possible scenarios. None that we're fixed to. It just depends on our ability to transverse it through mm-hmm. the power of intention and, you know, how clear we keep our creative channels. Um, and with the influence of these, you know, beings or future human selves that um, have survived those timelines and are seeking uh, genetic rehabilitation on some level, uh, you know, it gives us a clue and a window into, you know, the potentials. But at any moment in time, those potentials can be thwarted, but there's a survival mechanism with some beings that want to preserve those timelines to validate the existence that they hold at this current time, you know, even though they're beyond kind of time and space uh, reality as we know it. Laura, um, yeah, I didn't mean to interject. I, I wanted to ask you a question because you studied metaphysics. Uh, you've done uh, research on this. What about those who say that we can use our higher consciousness uh, to connect with divine guide or these sentient beings or even in some type of uh, interdimensional realm through through med- uh, meditation or dream state? Is there a possibility that an ordinary person can establish this communication through that process? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, everybody's got their own individual... I guess you could say agreements or, you know, deeper soul journey that is a much larger picture than our one incarnation here. And, uh, you know, whatever it takes to sort of connect one to source or the zero point field, um, you know, can help one to move into a place of being sovereign, you know, fully sovereign uh, with, you know, guides that appear along the way to sort of help with the initiation factor but then you have a lot that are trying to stifle the process through some level of control in order to, you know, either be a food source or uh, validate a certain control agenda that has been implemented into our DNA uh, 
through multi generational programmings and you know different uh, genetic codes that we carry. Um, so it's sort of like a stepping stone process. Mm -hmm. And as we start to activate our galactic chakras and as we start to upgrade our DNA, you know, that, you know, contact, you know, can increase. Uh, but we have to be very discerning about the kind of communication we're getting, um, you know, making sure that the things that we're communicating with are, are in relationship to or in agreement to our process of being fully sovereign and in direct connection with source field, unity, you know, consciousness type thing versus stifling the process through kind of capturing that soul essence into an agenda that, you know, for some that might be what they need for this particular experience at this time. And for others, they want to, you know, bypass that. So I don't look at it as like a duality so much of negative and positive. I see it more like stepping stones. How far is that consciousness willing to go, though, to completely break free and exist in the totality of one's multidimensional awareness versus, you know, stopping along the way and, you know, being a part of a soul group or uh, a race that has had a particular impact on our genetics throughout, you know, time? Because, you know, we carry ET genetics. I mean, we are extraterrestrial. Mm -hmm. now um, so I, I would say, yeah, through meditation and, you know, all sorts of ways, you know, we can connect in. But for those that don't have those experiences, it doesn't mean you're not progressing you might just have a different way of reaching that goal. Now, is it not um, only genetically, but also there are those who say that they claim that they have, after an experience, a, a contactee or even an abductee experience, they have a psychic connection. And can you foresee where more people, as we evolve, as our brains develop, that this is going to be more common, where there is going to be an established connection through t uh, telepathy with these uh, entities? Yeah, and just as much as we will amongst each other, uh, we're going to be way more open to the multidimensional nature of reality and all the different beings that exist and all these, you know, different levels and layers. Um, you know, the beings that take human form that are of a multidimensional consciousness, you know, will show abilities that are beyond what we've been taught as humans uh, that we hold. But, you know, our capacity to reach that, um, you know, is available to everybody and uh, yeah, I would say that, you know, you'll start to connect with, you know, a past life experience through a being, you might recognize that you're a part of, you were a part of that star system at one point, maybe you're a representative of that on earth. Um, uh, maybe, you know, the, the hybridization component comes in, um, and you sort of, you're either connecting with, you know, aspects of yourself or something within a group that will sound the alarm or, or create that reminder uh but you know there there's a difference between the truly benevolent ones that are helping us to attain the wholeness and full capacity of our dna potential and those that would you know want to stifle it for their own means and when it comes down to it there's really two types of beings: service to self service to others of course service to others doesn't mean you negate yourself but mm. i think it's going to be more common uh as the veils start to thin i think it's also going to be those that have transitioned, our loved ones that have passed on. You know, we're 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 going to be reunited, and we're just going to see a much larger landscape because our consciousness will have the ability, you know, to perceive it. But we have to get over the programmings, and you know, the implants, the ethereal implants, even from the times of Atlantis that have uh, kept us sort of in this time loop and this recycle process, um, instead of you know, reaching that purity of what doing the inner work and doing, you know, the alchemical soul work, you know, where, where that can take a person versus, you know, the things that are still trying to cap us into this, you know, system that uh, some groups have collaborated on, uh, some races have collaborated on being in control of. And and I think when we can get beyond that, um, you know, we'll, we'll see much more and we'll have a more neutral perspective towards it rather than like the fear of the things that are trying to get in our way and reaching and striving for the things that could possibly help save us. And we'll start to have a better energy circulation and awareness within ourselves of connecting, you know, to the sabotaging forces that rest within our being and the things within ourselves that can help us to transcend, you know, those limitations that have been programmed into us. So, 
you know, I just think the landscape is widening, which will help people not adopt the propaganda and the memes that come from, you know, other agendas. And, uh, and, and it's through being able to handle the dark and the light that gives us that opportunity mm. from a neutral perspective, knowing that, you know, ultimately we're co-creating this. Mm. Interesting. We have a question, Laura, from the, uh, is that from the chat, Bill? That's actually from the YouTube chat. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, how long did it take to recognize and allow synchronicities to transcend? How, how long does it take? How long did it take? Or maybe does it take? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a focused intention thing. I mean, that's what meditation can help with. Um, you know, if you're conscious in every waking moment or you strive to be conscious in every waking moment, you can see the difference between yourself perceiving things that validate your fears and anxieties about the future, about your health, about your relationships. And you also have the opportunity to see, you know, how divine magic is a part of our nature and our ability to um, connect uh, with, you know, important, you know, people on our journey versus, you know, something more random when we're caught up in the programming, things are a little bit more random. We're uh, easily manipulated. We're uh, seeking success or results in something that is more artificial than um, paying attention to the, the, the real processes that and the initiations we need to go through in order to notice that synchronicities and magic are constantly surrounding us. Um, and it, sometimes it takes a while for us to recognize how, whether we're unconscious or not, synchronicity plays a role in our capacity to awaken. But it's more being able to perceive that it's already there versus getting to a place of attaining the magic of synchronicity. Because there are always going to be like two forces coming at us. One would be the artificial intelligence signals that we might download that's kind of stirring us into an artificial timeline. The other would be the initiations that we go through when we're really paying attention to the inner work and the synchronicities that support that organic transformational process. So, you know, when adversity strikes, people have a choice. What are you going to do? Give your power away to a doctor, go on pharmaceuticals, um, get more disconnected or have that represent an opportunity to get closer to who you are through the ability to see what those messages are trying to say. Because every adversity and every symptom, really, you know, when it comes to health, is a blessing, you know, if we can see it as such. But we're conditioned to think it's a disease, it's an affliction, there's something wrong with us. But, you know, we're, we're pretty much responding in a healthy way to a really screwed up world. And, uh, and if we can give it the credit that it deserves and not put judgment on it, you know, we, 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 we can see how the medicine surrounds us and the synchronicities are a part of our divine birthright to, to, to be connected with. Um, but this other programming comes in and it blindsides people and, and they just think it's the human condition. This is the way we are as humans. We go to the doctor, we go on these meds if we're feeling this way. And, you know, and we're trying to like attain a goal of like happiness, success, and step, whatever it is. Um, and that can distract a person away from the natural magic and miracle energy that is, is what this earth is made of and what we're, actually like our divine template is made of so that simple awareness alone and just knowing that that exists will amplify it in our environment it'll help us to recognize it to give it more value and the other stuff you know begins to not be center stage and we start to call our power back and then all of a sudden it's like wow the thing that we were looking for was always here wow laura i just have to tell you it's like this your from your from your voice to my ears. It's like we're on the same path. And I had a question um, about ascension because you know I've been doing this for a couple of years. I've been getting so many downloads about ascension, and my spiritual gifts came in. I've been meditating, doing shadow work, and a lot of synchronicities have happened. And I'm connecting locally with so many people. We're actually having our first meeting tomorrow at my house because uh, I speak light language. So we're doing a light language DNA healing and meditation for the collective. And um, one thing I've noticed, and I had a phone call today 
and there were about five of us on the call, and we were all experiencing the same thing. We were starting to get doubts. We were starting to, you know, I've been watching, I usually don't watch the news much, but I started watching it. And, you know, I keep thinking, I keep um, in my intentions, I do my intentions and I try to match the vibration of whatever it is I'm asking for, whether it's financial abundance or it's, um, you know, getting a job on Guy MTV or whatever it is. Um, you know, I try to match the vibration. I may get, you know, a speaking place or, you know, synchronicities come up. But I also do it for the collective. And, you know, I do my biggest thing is I want the government to work for everybody. And a lot of the um, information we got in the not long ago was that um, the government um, we're going to see more polarity. It's going to get really, really bad before it gets better. And, and all the other systems have to kind of collapse and then be rebuilt in the correct way. And you see, saw a little bit, and then, you know, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. And everybody was like, well, you know, why even do this anymore? It doesn't feel like it's working. And then we had to be re reminded that Gaia is in her, she, she's in her labor. Uh, all these earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, the polarity with the, the government and different organizations, um, that all is um, the labor. And once we get over that, uh, we'll start seeing the signs for fifth dimensional consciousness for, you know, organizations, the actual physical proof that our society is changing. So, you know, my actual question, you know, that was the preface. The actual question is, um, I feel a lot better, but it's still rough um, because you do want to see more proof in the collective. I see it in my personal life, but I, I want to see it in the collective. Um, what do you see or feel uh, as far as the changes in, in our government and all the systems and society as a whole? When do you feel that that will actually start to change? Well, I think, I mean, I'm not like a Trump supporter so much as I'm just glad that the Bush and Clinton dynasty is gone. <laughs> right, I, I agree. It doesn't mean like, oh my gosh, Trump's the best. It's it's just, okay, he's got character deficiencies and that's oh, a, big yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, I don't feel that we're dealing with somebody that's immersed in the cabal that, you know, since he's been in presidency, We've seen, you know, indictments, uh, more arrests, more pedophilia rings, you know, coming out in uh, public forums, uh, more focused awareness of the criminal activities that have been going on behind the scenes. Mm, so yeah. just as the polarity is sort of increasing, it's sort of like a splinter coming to the surface. It's like, OK, um, before it might have been an unconscious uh, discomfort that everybody was feeling. And now it's like, OK. Now this is, you know, ready to really come out. And, and you know, at that phase, um, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to yank it out? Are you going to push it back in and pretend it's not there? Um, I mean, but I, I do notice that, you know, when you Google online and you're trying to, you know, find a remedy to something that's going on, you get all this information about herbs and really, you know, important supplements that, you know, the body needs. You know, all the information is out there in regards to disclosure and people's stories. Um, that if a person's curious enough, they can get on the flow of, you know, more uh, ascended type energies, which to me is more about expansion than, you know, floating out of here. Uh, and, you know, just going to the airport or going to stores that, uh, you know, normally would be, you know, filled with, I don't know, food that's tainted with preservatives and GMO type stuff. You know, you, you, you see even in the most conventional type grocery stores that there's you know a section for organic and natural foods there's uh even walmart has that you know and target and like places you wouldn't even expect you know you can get things that are really really good for you and healthy so you know these subtleties i notice and i'm like okay well you know sometimes i'm like feeling discouraged and, but then i'm at the airport i'm like i can actually get like really good snacks that are organic and 
or so they say. I mean, nothing's that organic when your skies are being sprayed, but um, there's just more awareness, you know, of what we need to change. We still have the option to go the negative route, but the option to go the positive route is not so hidden and difficult to find. So it does come down to the individual. And I think, you know, the more people that are waking up, yes, you know, the event or what sort of ripple effect it's going to have is, is, is going to, you know, increase. And right now it's sort of moving at the speed of grass growing and hair growing. You can't really notice if you stare at it, but if you right. walk and, and, and you look again, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, things are slowly but surely um, making themselves more available. Uh, you know, but at the same time, there there's going to be those that bank on those names and labels. Maybe they're not being honest. I mean, Whole Foods is not necessarily a positive thing. Um, if you look at, you know, who they sold themselves to and, you mm, know, yeah. things that support. But, you know, at the same time, there's more health food stores. There's more ability to take one's health into their own hands. And I think that's one of the most important steps because that's, you know, one sign of, you know, where we've been really compromised is we don't feel we have any other choice but to go for the doctor cure, the chemotherapy. And, you know, all you have to do is Google an alternative uh, way to deal with cancer and you're going to find plenty of information to give you a second thought. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is encouraging. So how about uh, the banking system? And, you know, they say like, uh, that's one of the things that are going to come out. The banksters are starting, are going to be arrested and all this. Uh, supposedly, there, there's a lot of information that when they find out how much they ripped off from everybody, uh, they're going to do debt freeness of, of nations and individuals. And there might be some compensation and uh, a whole revamping of the banking system so it, it becomes more fair. Do you feel that's going to happen? Well, I feel, you know, the fact that these things are being discussed and there's whistleblowers from the CIA and the NSA that have been like, okay, we've stayed a part of these organizations to be able to get the documents that we need, the proof that we need to, uh, you know, bust these folks. It's taken a while because they've needed to collect, you know, the right data to be able to, you know, create, you know, some level of proof. Um, you know, the fact that these discussions are happening and people, you know, are seeing like, okay, even though we're all kind of looking at our watch, like, okay, when is it going to happen? We're hearing all this stuff, but when are we actually going to see that it's happening? At least the discussions are happening because it puts everybody on that edge of, okay, well, we want to see a follow through here. And, you know, these individuals that are being busted, you know, most people have strong morality. They, they are family people or they care about the earth or, you know, they've just been playing the game without recognizing the manipulations. And then, oh my gosh, you know, look at the corruption. I mean, that in and of itself, just calling it out, you know, creates a double take. Um, you know, where all of it's going to go? Well, you know, we're dealing with cloning technologies. We're dealing with, you know, off-planet colonies and underground bases and who's who. You know, it's hard to even tell, like, who's real, who's not, who's being arrested, who's not. And who's, you know, a body double and who's a clone and who's uh, the real deal. Um, I mean, that's a whole other wave of disclosure. Uh, I mean, I, I think just the discussion in and of itself, just like when people started to talk about 9-11 being an inside job, um, it was very much a discussion. And then you get architects and engineers for 9-11, you know, people that are like, we're not conspiracy theorists. We just are professionals and something is not right here. This is not the way it would have gone if this scenario was what they presented, that planes through, you know, flew into the building. That just is not possible on a physics level, on a scientific level, it's just not possible. So you start to get the experts and those that have been educated in the matrix to, you know, put their two cents in. And, you know, they've shot themselves in the foot because the system has educated experts, the same experts that are busting the facade. Um, and they're getting more of a voice. And, you know, most people can agree that, yeah, something was going on there with 9-11. So something's going on with the money system. Something's going on with these arrests. And that alone can trigger something in the mass consciousness that can help to push it over the edge versus not having that information at all. So even if we're not seeing incredible results, the fact that that information is floating around and it's pretty, like, it's, it's becoming more on a mainstream level, that, to me, is encouraging enough to, to feel that the physical reality is going to catch up fully and completely. And 
I didn't have that kind of hope. I, I mean, I did have that kind of hope before, but we weren't seeing these kind of things, you know, up until now. I mean, these mass arrests and, you know, th- how how m- many people can acknowledge the fact that the Clintons and Bushes or, you know, some of these folks have done s- some serious criminal activity um, where there's smoke, there's fire, you know, and some of these books that have been forgotten, like Kathy O'Brien and what her testimonies are. Oh, you know, yeah. The yeah, attention yeah. they deserve finally because the other stuff is starting to uh, pop its head out of, uh, you know, what was formerly like unseen or, or brushed off. Mm. Laura, I have another question from the chat room. Uh, this is a question from Neutron, and he asks, and uh, you know what? This is a good question because I was thinking of it too. Laura, has there been any further developments since your realization of being part of Project Pegasus time travel with Basiago and Mendez? Well, I wasn't so much a part of it like they were. Um, I wasn't put into any projects uh, as a kid, but I was targeted. Uh, to be thrown onto a timeline that I did not wish to be on. Um, I mean, the revelations, I guess, just come from more whistleblowers coming forward. I mean, I take it sort of with a grain of salt. I kind of keep it at arm's length to be, you know, ultimately discerning. But you hear what Corey Good has to say and, you know, Captain K and, you know, some of these others that have claimed to be on Mars and some of the clients that I get, you know, who are breaking through the program and seeing, you know, maybe the time that they spent serving and then being age regressed and some of those revelations, um, the picture is just getting a lot more clear. Like it's, it's validating what my intuition was telling me when I didn't have, um, you know, other whistleblowers to sort of count on for, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say the word proof, but major validation of the stuff that I was, you know, feeling very wary about. So, um, you know, like when I blew the whistle about the Mars recruitment, a couple of years later, a website came out and all the stuff that I was suspicious of about the group that was wishing to recruit me, um, somebody had done the research and, and found that these things that I was picking up on were actually true. Things like artificial telepathy and, you know, the my labs and the military involvement and uh, the manipulation of, you know, studying uh, the phenomena of abduction but being the abductors or being a part of the abductions and you know all these things that i was suspicious of when it came down to oh you know this is what we need to do and you know the people that were involved a lot of them were well-intentioned thinking you know this is this is what needs to happen we we have to do this i was like well something else is going on there's another hidden layer here and so i would say the new developments are those hidden layers that i was being suspicious of have have turned out to be you know, correct. And then, of course, more than I ever thought. I'm like, oh my God, it's way more than I thought. But um, I definitely have been validated that it was a good idea I didn't go. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Laura, we're going to be going to break in a few minutes. But before we go to break, I have a question for you. Do you think that by the cabal and the White Hats getting down to those that are trying to undermine uh, everything that's going on, the corruption within government, that when the smoke clears we may actually get to the truth of all the possible lies that have been going on for decades, and we may get to some type of disclosure uh, regarding uh, you know, alien civilizations, possibly visitations to our planet. And how will this affect the, the global community? Because that may be just going on here, but how does it affect uh, you know, all the countries in general? Well, I mean, the information's already out there, and again, it takes each individual to have the curiosity and also the discernment to be able to weave through uh, this level of, you know, education. Um, I, I, I mean, humanity's traumatized as is, you know, with all the world wars that have been fought and all the past lives, uh, all the dark cycles that we've gone through and all that we've endured. But then there's a new trauma, you know, what we've invested in, what we've relied on, what we have loosely trusted that has betrayed us. I mean, that's that's a whole nother shock. So, you know, I think there's a level of disbelief and sort of that denial period, but you can only really deny it for so long because there's there's deeper aspects of ourselves that attach ourselves to the information and want to know the truth, even if our ego is fighting it and, 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 and wanting to dismiss it. Once the information, you know, passes by, 
you know, you could tell somebody about chemtrails, they might ignore you, but it might give them something to go on where they attract more information or more signs to either validate or dismiss what you said. So you get disclosure where it triggers people and they first might shun it or, or walk the other way, but there's going to be more things that will um, develop it in, in a person's awareness that, that is just a matter of time. Because, you know, once you're exposed to anything truthful, even about yourself, you know, you, you can only shove it down for so long. So, uh, I mean, I think there, a mass rehabilitation is underway to help people with the trauma of, you know, look at what I've invested in, look at what I believed in, look what I spent money on, uh, look what I gave my life to, uh, the, you know, the wars that I fought. And, and these were the real reasons for it. You know, we're talking trauma, anger, um, and, uh, you know, the best thing that we can do uh, as a community that's pretty used to this sort of information is, is, is try and take a rehabilitation sort of approach with compassion to, you know, what certain beings are going to be going through, but it's going to be a mass deprogramming really. And, uh, and I think justice will take place. Those that have been criminal to the human race are going to be held accountable, you know, because the, all those principles that we were taught that were channeled in the wrong directions are going to be channeled in the right directions because we already have developed that mentality of morality or putting pedophiles in prison, you know, but then it's like, Oh my gosh, the people we voted into office are doing that. You know, it, it could create a massive revolution that can work against us, but if we do it appropriately and we do it um, where we start to look to ourselves and we build our community, um, we can override it without, you know, protests and revolution that ends up throwing us into like a martial law type scenario. So, you know, we have to be, you know, strong guides for, for, for others. But yeah, I, I see sort of a you know, people going through a mini crisis, you know, individuals, mass groups, and, and it's just going to continue to spread and, uh, you know, and people will find a way to address it accordingly. Um, and it's just good that there's resources out there that know how to handle it or, you know, maybe can help a person wade through it to, to still maintain a, a, a level of self-worth and, and, uh, you know, confidence in, and, and what's on the other side of it. Cause it doesn't have to be fear-based. What's on the other side of it is that we're liberated from it. You know, it's disturbing and fear-based at first, but that's after you let go of the attachment that you start to really pull into what's on the other side, which is we start to learn how to fall back on ourselves. And that's what we've been missing all along. Fascinating. <clears throat> Listen, we're going to have to go to a break, a real quick break. We're going to come back with Laura in a few minutes. Uh, I'm sure there's other questions. I have a few. I'm sure Julia does. Bill does, too. So let us take a break. Uh, you're listening to the Starborn Connection on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio. We'll see you on the other side. I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. It's AJ from Vibes, Mind, Body, Spirit. Have you been searching for unique items to create or add to your sacred space? What about tools for your holistic healing? Or those one-of-a-kind magical ingredients to manifest your desires? Well, look no more because Vibes has a variety of items to assist you in your spiritual journey. From crystals to candles, incense to books, tapestries to jewelry, OnlineVibes.com has what you're seeking. We even have some thoughtful and mindful gifts to share with your friends and 
family too. Visit us at onlinevibes.com from the comfort of your home or give us a call at 385-244-1099 to have your order beautifully packaged and sent directly to you or a loved one. And right now, take advantage of the coupon code KGRA at checkout to receive 15% off any order. Remember, online, vibez.com. Luis Elizondo is making headlines around the world. He can be seen on every major news network because he disclosed that he's been working on a secret UFO program with the Department of Defense. And he wants to address the UFO community who he says inspired him to release this information. And you can only hear this at the 2018 International UFO Congress. Tickets are going fast for the 2018 International UFO Congress. Get yours at UFO congress.com linda house steve bassett don schmidt and michael carter are just a few names you may recognize however the ufo congress is also famous for bringing new exciting ufo information to our attendees find out more about the incredible lineup we have put together at ufo congress.com the ufo congress is in february 2018 in the beautiful desert outside of mountain hills arizona we look forward to seeing you there get your tickets at ufo congress.com Mainstream media's most wanted. KGRARadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to the second part of our show. You're here tonight with Julia, Mike, and our ever wonderful producer, Bill Skywatcher. And our guest tonight, Laura Eisenhower. And Laura, I wanted to ask you uh, just to, you know what, what you think. The Me Too movement is that a, is that a step in the right direction, or you know is that a part of the the movement away from abuse and everything? A, re, a truly, I'm sorry. What, what what would be the movement away from it? Uh, the Me Too movement. The, yeah. The, yeah. Yep. I would say so. For sure. Uh, I mean, that's that's a huge deep deeper foundational uh soul fracture oh, isn't it yeah. wow yeah oh yeah is the Mrs. female energy power sexual energy um the programmings that have distorted our expression of the masculine and feminine and how one relates to it uh you know i mean some stuff has been taught some stuff is just predatory based in you know attaching to you know darker entities you know based on you know maybe an ego imbalance. I mean, the, the the list is sort of endless. So, you know, giving the voice back to people, uh, both men and women who have felt compromised, you know, on a sexual level is, you know, incredibly important because that definitely is uh, the root of why it's been so difficult to ascend is that we can't seem to integrate the, the, the mm-hmm. sexual energies with our higher love and our understanding of sacred union. It's, it's just, you know, a, a, a game it's it, and, and, you know, both sides need healing though. You know, women, um, need to see where they feed into it. Not to say that they deserve anything or any of it. Men, you know, need to, you know, check themselves and get in touch with that part of who they are. I mean, they're taught not to even cry growing up. I mean, that, right, that, right, right. That, if we don't have the energy circulation in connection with our sexual energy, then, you know, we're, we're in a dualistic uh, sort of animalistic um, level of awareness when it comes to that. And it's, and it's the most sacred thing. It's the one thing that can really start to activate us into these higher uh, ascension energies is to feel that aspect of ourselves. You know, whether we're calling out uh, something terrible that happened to us and we're allowing ourselves transparency and we're coming out of um, that place of isolation because of that pain or, you know, one is recognizing, okay, yeah, I did misuse that power and, and I'm, I'm ready and willing to self-correct. The 13th gate and the 13th sign is actually connected to the asteroid Chiron, the wounded healer. And for us to really get into that unified field, you know, it requires us to look at the wounds, look at, you know, the separation between um, our spirit nature and our physical nature and where that aspect of ourselves has been wounded. You know, how kids are undermined for the dreams that they have and the abilities that they have and it's sort of knocked out of us and kicked out of us. Well, that's going to produce 
behaviors that are really disturbing, you know, and, and we're not taught to, to, to view things on a sexual level in that way. It's like, mm -hmm. how do you ease the person in order to get them to like you versus how can I find my true love who sees me for who I am? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I hear that. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, my, my my mantra, uh, and this is this covers a lot of areas, and it covers that me too area. It covers, uh, you, you know, the UFO field investigators. Uh, we have to lose our ego, I think, in order to move forward with, you know, understanding what disclosure is, understanding what relationships are. I think ego plays a big role in building a wall between ourselves. And others, and potential mates, and uh, you know, and and I think that ego is built up by, you know, uh, some of the ways that we were raised. I can remember, you know, I can remember, uh, even in grade school, way back in the '60s, that you know, uh, guys always picked on the gals, you know, and, and uh, it just gets bigger and better as time goes on. But it means he likes you. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he likes, yeah, he, 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 he likes, it's like, uh, how about <clears throat> change the behavior? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but the ego is the destroyer here. You know, it, we have to, we don't have to throw it away, but we have to be able to, you know, move it aside or turn it off when we need to. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really that integration, uh, process. Cause you know, people talk about closing down chakras or, you know, the chakra's not good or that's not good. It's like, well, you know, we don't want to, you know, cut off our arm because, you know, we reach for a cigarette or a gun. <laughs> uh, mm. We just use what we've been given in, in, a, in a wiser way. Um, if we can integrate our ego energy with our higher consciousness, then it becomes a really powerful vehicle for change. And um, the only place that I really see the value of ego is really being proud of, you know, the work we're doing um, and stepping back and questioning you know, some of our behaviors so that, you know, with the humbleness to self-correct. Hmm. Okay. Now I have another uh, question from, uh, is that from the chat room or is that from the YouTube guys? KGRA. All right. Uh, Neutron, once again, wants to know, are Pleiadians and Andromedans interdimensional here on Earth or of a higher interdimension? From what I've come to understand is the Pleiadian energy interacts more with the Earth than most extraterrestrial groups. <clears throat> um, we carry strong genetic relationship with them. You know, it's similar to saying, okay, well, the planet Mercury and the planet Venus are closest to Earth, and you know, th they impact us as far as okay, mind control. That's trying to take away our relationship with our higher mind or the distortion of love and sexual energy. Um, you know, we have this strong thing going on with Venus and the Venus transits. So the way I look at uh, the Pleiadians is they, they've had uh, a strong relationship with Earth, and there's negative and positive within that race. Um, and the negative doesn't always mean that it really meant for it to get as bad as it did, uh, except for maybe with, you know, certain individuals that decided to collaborate with some of the fallen entities that wanted to, you know, have control but it's more the hybrids and more what the human version decided to do with that energy than probably the actual pure race um and then you look at the andromedans and as far as well there's the andromedan star system then there's the andromedan galaxy and in this ascension window period andromeda galactic core and the milky way galactic core becoming one again which has a huge impact on our energy bodies and it brings us really into what true ascension is all about and it actually relates to our eighth and ninth chakra, which is an infinity spiral. And it connects with different stargates on Earth that have been compromised to keep us from being able to get in touch with that. So there's uh, beings from Andromeda that are a part of this Ascension timeline. Basically, from what I've come to understand and through research and just contemplation, as I you guys probably gathered, I think, a lot, uh, there... Uh, have been you know groups of beings that have come in to help sort of weave this back together to help our consciousness to prepare um 
And I mean, Corey talks about the sphere beings. Um, I don't quite dive into what those guys represent as much as the founder races and the different groups uh, that were beings that were born of or have the form of those two galactic cores connected. And there's a race called the Aquafarian that went extinct when the electrical wars happened way back in our galactic history when humans were reseeded on this particular planetary body after we sank in density. And, uh, and they're coming back. And then, you know, the indigos and the crystal kids that we hear about that we pretty much all are, except they're maybe more the activators because they have more of it in their awareness, you know, are helping to activate DNA that connects to the Andromedan uh, galaxy. So from my understanding, Andromedan, uh, when the Ascension timeline went from the Melchizedek hosting over to the goddess frequency, which is really the planetary body and nature <laughs> being the uh -huh. essential time because that energy is more grounded into the earth body than it ever was before. It couldn't be before because this place was too dark for it. It's still dark, but you know, this energy has, you know, in a sense returned, but it's, it's really an awakening of humanity. It's us being grounded and returning to ourself, which, you know, helps to initiate it. It sort of goes simultaneously. Um, that Andromedan beings uh, have assisted this energy uh, because the true galactic core, the true heartbeat of Gaia is both of those cores connected. And the reason it's been difficult for that energy to be grounded in this planetary body for the last 26,000 years is not just because of the dark technologies that have been put in place, but you know all the different agendas that have sought to keep us really traumatized and in a dark state of consciousness. And so when the Andromedans, you know, play a part, they're really like helping to host the Ascension timeline since 2009, 2010. And it's like, okay, well, what happened with the Melchizedek hosting? Well, it all became patriarchal. Um, everything that they ended up believing in started to get dictated by an imposter spirit that took the place of Yahweh or whatever their worshiping God was or the God of this particular galaxy. And it steered us further and further away from the mother source. And uh, the Andromedans have been helping us to really understand what that's all about. And they can really help us to reconnect to what this human vessel is truly made of and what its potential is. The Palladians, um, I, I I just have a healthy, I hope it's healthy, discernment with. Um, I hear in some headlines or some uh, posts that people share mm -hmm. that you know they've been given the power or ability to run the show now. And that they're going to clean everything up and they're the ones that uh, have, I don't know, become a part of this, you know, new treaty. And as far as treaties go, the, the only one that's really positive, or positive is the Emerald Covenant. But that got distorted and, and those teachings got distorted. And there's still factions or aspects of the Palladian race that are part of that whole distortion. So we just have to be a little bit careful. The Andromedans, I would say... Are, are much more clear sort of non-dualistic type deal. They don't have that, that mix of confusion that we deal with in some races. It doesn't mean, you know, we, we forget about the Palladians because of it. It just means that, you know, we want to see more of a connection between the Palladians and the Andromedan intention versus the Palladian uh, intention with the societies and, you know, the, the whole, uh, you know, master race type mentality that humans have adopted and that whole new world order, but it's for your own good, <laughs> that, that still compromises people that don't deserve to be compromised. The Andromedan philosophy is, is way different because it's more about the upgrading of our physical vessel and teaching us how to return to um, the teachings that really come through us when we do the soul work, the inner work, but it gives us a little bit of guidance as far as you know what that inner work means and what it's where it's taking us um andromedan beings tend to strive towards clearing those distortions and encouraging us to stand in that power or that full on capacity that we used to have and i'm sure there's plenty of pleiadians that are in agreement to it but there's some that are not hmm. so who's actually helping us get rid of the AI and the programs. Uh. Well, it's really us. I mean, we have to see ourselves as these 
higher entities and beings and you know and and yes those other beings do exist it's not like oh it's just a you know, fragment of your higher consciousness vibration you know just coming at you and speaking to you i mean those beings do exist and they've been holding space they have not really been able to enter the sphere of our reality for a long time until we had this window period or, or the geophysics of the planet was such that we were in this level of alignment where it wasn't just going to be a philosophy that was taught it was going to be something that we could actually embrace and integrate into our physical vessel and that has not been the case until uh this ascension window period which is called a stellar activation cycle and it has to do with the stargates having the capacity to open up after these catastrophes and you know the atlantean cataclysm the lemurian holocaust and uh the destruction of the higher root races which are the initial root races which were seven dimensional energies um all that went out of the window and and didn't end up maintaining itself and so those energies are sort of returning to our consciousness and the beings that are supporting that i would say are the crystal star hosts the aurora the aquafarians <clears throat> the founder races the guardians so anytime you see like guardian alliance or anything connected to guardian that's a really good uh energy right there um and what that does is it helps us to connect with the divine trinity you know, not in biblical terms so much at all, because uh, that's all kind of been distorted. But it's that blueprint within ourselves where the masculine and feminine are in such balance that they're constantly creating this flow of energy of like liquid plasma Christ light to where we are embodying a Christ consciousness. And when these cataclysms happened, we were very vulnerable as a planet, as a humanity. And these dark technologies actually messed with the earth grids and unplugged. The masculine and feminine energies on an earth grid level and most of the stargates got compromised or controlled or they started to do dark rituals and all sorts of things to plug up those energies to create like miasmic pollution and and all sorts of blockages that we were born into you know so we can think we're flailing humans but at the same time we were born into something that right off the bat was a distortion and even sacred geometries have been recoded and they're put in reversal spins so that we digress instead of you know, walk the path of an ascended master or somebody on the path to become an ascended master. And so um, look out for, you know, crystal star, uh, just even just goddess energy, Gaia energy, um, <clears throat> the Aquafarians uh, and the Aurora. They are mostly Andromedan, but at the same time, they're part of the founder group. They split off and stayed with Andromeda, sort of waiting for this period where we came back into alignment on a galactic core level so that they you know, could come in and assist us again. But again, they're a part of our multidimensional potential, you know, to, to, to get to those higher levels of awareness, but they are interacting. They're helping, you know, people when they sleep at night, you know, get those upgrades. And, you know, as an astrologer, I see in people's charts, like, okay, how well are you receiving downloads? Because we all have access to getting downloads, you know, really good downloads. But, you know, if we're not accustomed to, getting out of captivity you know it's it's I, I use this metaphor of like it's similar to uh you know how many generations of being born into a zoo w where is the point where the zoo animal doesn't even want to go back to its natural habitat because it's actually afraid of it. it doesn't even know how to exist there anymore so uh humans are very intimidated by their own natural state and so these founder races these guardians and a lot of what many people who have become conscious or who are born very conscious are helping to reactivate all of that and people have contact experiences with these particular entities that you know have held that space and have been waiting for an entry point into somebody's level of awareness um and they haven't been able to since uh pretty recently actually but that dna potential it's it, the thing is it's like those kids are targeted i mean we've been targeted um <clears throat> You know, uh, all the pharmaceuticals, you know, the ADD, the, you know, Ritalin, the, um, wow, if you don't follow the, the program, you know, then something's, you know, seriously wrong with you. You know, if we could just leave the kids alone and let them sort of lead the way and guide the way, we're actually the benevolent beings that we need. You know, there will be reminders and aspects of those higher levels of our consciousness that intervene and play a role, but the most benevolent ones are really just trying to turn the light for us again and and we are at a stage in this ascension window period where they have more access to us but at the same time they don't want to get wrapped up in the war 
uh, and, and, you know, it's not so easy. So it takes the willingness of somebody's consciousness and it's almost like you almost have to not really strategize, but like, okay, well, how can we work around this level of infiltration? Um, <laughs> things when we start to turn the lights on and we start to upgrade our DNA and we survive the psychic attacks that are trying to keep us from reaching those higher states of consciousness, we override the implants, the negative technologies that have impacted the earth grids. And we start to revitalize the circulation of the planetary, uh, uh, matrix system, the organic one, not the one with the overlay of artificial intelligence. So we have to know the difference between an artificial intelligence signal and the signals and downloads that come in that are from organic ascension, just as much as we need to have discernment about the different types of beings that we're interfacing with and know like how to say no and how to protect ourselves and know when like, okay, this is actually serving my highest growth. This is actually helping me to be sovereign. I'm not just giving my power away to it because I think it's higher or more advanced than myself. So the thing is, we are advanced. It's just our consciousness moves way faster than our physical bodies, and we get discouraged by the speed at which the physical is going that sometimes we just give up and we give our power away. And the most benevolent beings don't want us to do that. Mm. Fascinating. Wow. Good stuff. <coughs> um, <clears throat> I guess I, I guess one of the uh, best examples of synchronicity, and you can tell me uh, whether this is a good example or not, was actually how Julia and I and a couple of other people kind of fell together. Oh yeah, uh, wasn't that weird? Uh, uh, it was a <clears throat> miracle. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you know, uh, Audrey uh, asked us if, uh, uh, well, she asked me if I would open up a little chapter down here of Starborn Support, and I said, of course. And, um, you know, I was uh, saying, well, I can't do this myself. You know, I need to uh, find some people who are willing to work. And it was almost uh, like I didn't even have to ask. I ran into uh, Julia. Uh, I said to her at MUFON, I said, hey, listen, I have a project. Yes, yes, I, I will be a part of it. And uh, same for the other guy. You remember, uh, oh, God, what's Chris's last name? Augustine. Yeah, Augustine, right. You remember Chris Augustine, uh, I think, from uh, the conference, right? The Free Your Mind conference, Laura. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was he was part of the uh, the thing there. And uh, <clears throat> after we got it all together, uh, we, fi we we were thinking, how can we best, you know, serve the people? And uh, simultaneously, it was like, well, radio show. Okay, we'll do that next week. And uh, we started doing a radio show on Blog Talk and. Uh, I guess after a while, uh, the group was weeded out. Uh, Chris and uh, <clears throat> Laura. Yeah, uh, I forget. Yeah, Laura, Laura Weiser. Weiser. Those two people kind of went their separate ways, and it's been uh, you know Julia and I as as kind of like the tag team here. And it really works well. It, works <laughs> it, does. Well. it does. And to add to that, the whole uh, I was meditating. Uh, and this was like six years ago or six, seven. That whole time I was when I started doing the investigations with MUFON where I met you, I started to meditate that I wanted to do a radio show. Yeah. I wanted to get into media more and and look what happened. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the best examples that I have. I don't know. What do you think, Laura? Best examples of just synchronicity? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, things falling together like that. It was just amazing. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it just came together so quickly. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, another thing is I've been um, meditating for about a year now to – I'm in, we're outside of Philadelphia, and, you know, I always have to travel out west. I have a lot of friends out west that are all into ascension. They all have their different gifts, all – you know, different, some people speak light language, but, uh, you know, I have to go out west or I'm on Zoom. And I really was lonely. I really, I have friends here, but they weren't into the ascension process. They had no idea what I'm talking about. So I really wanted more people. And I, it took me a year of meditation. And uh, the Unity Light Language page, which is on Facebook of light language speakers, 
And it's not just people that speak light language. It's all kinds of people. And um, uh, there was this girl on there, and, you know, she did a couple of videos. I did maybe two videos of my light language. She did a lot more. And um, all of a sudden, um, we started, to, we realized we lived like 40 minutes from each other. So uh, she, we called each other on the phone. And then the next day she calls me and she says, oh, Spirit told me that you, I should start up a group with you and they should meet at your house. And, and I was so thrilled because I don't like to drive on highways. I don't, I, I just drive locally. So she was more than willing to come out. She, she's been coming out every week. We have lunch and tomorrow's our, our, our premier meeting for light language activation and that, to me, is such an incredible synchronicity. And, and you meet people by meeting other people and other people. And, and f that's the wonderful thing about Facebook. I mean, even though it's, it, it's technology and, you know, it has a bad connotation, you know, the CIA knows every move. But it's also connecting, if you use it correctly, it's connecting groups and people. And I would have never found this this woman that lives so close to me that shares my beliefs and so that's tremendous amount and there's been so much so many others synchronicity yeah. the whole negative projection on you know certain things it's like you know we deserve the right to have our own personal relationship with whatever what is in front of us uh even chemtrails it's like yeah initially it might make us all angry incredibly angry but at the same time a shift in our perception can change the way what we see impacts us. The way we use the internet as a tool can change the way we impact humanity. Um, yeah, if we're just you know going there and just sharing for the sake of being social uh, and we're being sort of spied on, uh, yeah, and then it's like, good, spy on us because you guys are screwed, you know? Go ahead and watch because, you know, now you know what you're in for um, because that's what we're talking about. And then, you know, there's others that might be about ready to jump on that frequency. And, yeah, they might go through psychic attack because they're easily picked up on. But, you know, they have all sorts of technologies anyway. And, you know, the Internet is a way to monitor people. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, it's up biting them in the app. Excuse my language. It's, it's, it's the whole, like, if you can just get through the psychic attacks and get through the ramifications of being somebody who's devoted to the truth and ascension – using a medium to which they manipulate, then it, it actually reflects back on them and it ends up, you know, attacking them in return versus um, giving up and saying, I'm never going to use the computer because my show got infiltrated or I felt an attack when I posted this or I lost all these friends because nobody is on the same page as me. It's like we just have to get through that rough spot and utilize these tools and have our perception in alignment with these tools in a way that actually serves us. And then there's no weapon that they can use against us because we've turned the weapons into a blessing and, and, a, and, and a, a launching pad to us being able to tap into our greater abilities without relying on technology. It's like, you know, this is the starting ground. Maybe we'll be more telepathic and we won't go. Mm. To the oh, well, that's the, like, that's the goal. <laughs> And also the, the people listening in, they might actually be converted. I hate to use that word, but uh, they might actually, hey, these people, I like the way they're talking. I like the way they're thinking. I, I don't think I want to do this job anymore. So, oh, yeah. Like, right. Hmm. And, and it's just that fine line between where is technology maybe supplementing or overriding our spiritual development and where is it helping us with our spiritual development and you know everybody's going to have their own experience with it and just needs to check themselves you know i mean sometimes you just have to take a break from it but i mean how else are we going to reach each other how else are we going to meet each other i mean we're people behind the keyboards yes there's other things that are watching but they've been watching for god knows how long and now we're watching them our eyes are on them so thanks for the tool <laughs> <laughs> And you could also apply that with everything, like um, negative stuff that happens to you is always a lesson, like how you deal with it. Um, you could either be angry or you could use it as a growth and learn from it. And so with anything, 
uh, it's you could either deal with it negatively or positively, and that's you know I think a great tool you know for people to understand all everything that happens to us is for a it's a, either a lesson we need to learn or we need to go through that in order to ascend, mm-hmm. like the dark night of the soul kind of thing. <clears throat> um, yeah, definitely. You know, and the artificial intelligence component would be us just being artificial with ourselves, but we can use these tools as a way to express our true authenticity with each other. And then, you know, we're we're helping to create the paradigm of where technology and nature are in sync with each other rather than at opposition. Wow. Really neat. Boy. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a lot to digest. It is. It's a lot of information, <laughs> and we're we're about down to ascension time. It's eleven thirty. Absolutely, it's take, my, it so away. take it away. I'm, take I'm it away. only actually going to talk a little bit. I'm going to bring up two two things. I really want Laura to to because um, she is a special guest. I want her to do most of the talking. But she's always, I, she's always special. I know, always yeah. special, and. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to share with you guys some things that I've learned. Um, we're going to talk just a, briefly about, uh, I think this is the biggest thing that everybody thinks about. It's it's financial abundance. And it seems like light workers <laughs> are the ones that struggle the most. I mean, you see these people in their fancy houses and their cars and they're traveling and they don't seem to have a care in the world. And here we're trying to do all this work for humanity and we never seem to have any money. And that's a program that has to stop. And it stops with you and your um, – there is a way for, I guess, the word would be unlimited abundance. And it can come financially or it can come by, hey, a uh, free plane ticket somewhere or a free concert or, uh, you know, people offering their services in their home for you. Uh, it can come in many ways. Uh, but, but the biggest thing, uh, there's all these books on, on attracting wealth into your life. And here's what I, I'm really learning this now. Um, it's matching the vibration of what you want. So, and it really, really works. And it's not really hard to do, but it takes a while because you, you make the intention. Okay, let's see what our goal is. Okay, my goal is to um, be paid for what I truly love to do, which is the radio. So here I have a radio show, um, but it doesn't supply me any income. It's a labor of love. And so I'd like to um, start receiving money from it or, you know, an income from it that I could, you know, live on. You know, if, I mean, right now my husband, you know, is the sole provider. I don't work anymore. I, I got out of that matrix a year ago and I've never been more happier. And so, but I'd like my own income. I'd like to see some fruits of my labor. So, you know, I've been focusing on, okay, how would that feel? How would it feel to make money doing what I love? So it's not even work because it's what I love. So I concentrate, um, you know, on, on the show and having it go mainstream. How would it feel if it went mainstream? And uh, we, 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 and it really grew to, you know, I mean, it's big now, but it's like big on the computer. We have a few stations that were, you know, on the mainstream, but like really big, like Howard Stern, maybe like yeah, or coast to coast. <laughs> so, um, so what you do is you, you, I verbally do a, an intention. Like I want Starborn Connection to be mainstream for KGRA to be mainstream so we can all make, you know, incredible income from it and it can reach so much more people. I want, my intention is to have, to do work that I truly love. So whatever it is that you want to do 
or I want to show on Guy TV and, and, you know, that's one of my things that I would love to do, you know, have an interview show on Gaia. So, um, a friend of mine actually opened up a me- is opening up a media company similar to Gaia and he, he wants to do the meetings at my house. Uh, so that's a stepping stone. That's something that immediately happened. So I, I, I'm verbally saying the intention, and then I sit. It could be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes until I feel, I try to feel how it would feel when that happens. And let's say Gaiam is in Boulder, Colorado. So I imagine I'm in Boulder, Colorado for just a few weeks taping before I go home. And, you know, how it would feel to look in the mountains or have dinner with uh, the people there and, and imagine, you know, how it would feel. And then, then how would it feel to have unlimited abundance for everything I want to do? I love to travel. So, um, you know, I imagine how it would feel to be on the plane and just write a check and here's the check and it doesn't even make a difference in my bank account because it's so high, like unlimited, how, how would that feel? So you're matching the vibration, you're making an intention, you're matching the vibration. Then there's action. Um, action could be, let's say you want a house and you want a bigger house. Um, so you made your intention, you match the vibration, then you go on the computer and start looking for the house you want. And it doesn't mean you can afford it at the time. You're just looking, you're just taking some sort of action or, um, you know, you connect with the right people. When I heard my friend, uh, was starting this media company, I was like, oh, you know, we're doing a meeting at my house. Oh yeah, we can film that. And we're also doing movies and documentaries. And um, it was one of my light language friends. So um, so everybody's interconnected. And you just have to have your ears open and your eyes open. So matching the vibration of what you want is very important. As also keeping a high vibration. And that doesn't mean you're in bliss all the time and enjoy all the time. It just means you're at a higher vibration. Uh you can't like what what I'm starting to do now is see through things, through situations, seeing what's really there. Um, you know, I can turn on the news and I know right away, oh, they're lying or that's right, but they twisted it. Like you can just know. And um, so I try to stay away from that polarity game that they're playing on the news and, and politics. Although, um, you know, once in a while I'll check in uh, to see what's going on or, you know, but because uh, you have to be a little bit, you know, a little bit in like what's going on, what do I need to uh, meditate on or pray on. So matching the vibration of what you want and uh, feeling how it would feel to have a bigger house, to have bigger rooms, imagine how it would feel to have meetings at your house with all these people that are exactly the way you are and you can talk about all these wonderful things all the ascension stuff the paranormal stuff like all the stuff you want to talk about nobody laughs at you and imagine how that would feel to have friends in your area so I mean it's not just financial money coming but all the other abundance could be friends it could be local people that you could just call and have a cup of coffee Uh, family members that start believing the way you believe and are, you know, you're able to have conversations. So abundance, um, it's just your mindset and every situation like negative situations, keeping that high vibration. Okay. What's the lesson I need to learn from this? So the last thing is I've been doing shadow work and I think I might've spoken about it before where, uh, certain feelings come up. And I have to feel those feelings and I thank them and I transmute them and integrate them into my matrix. I integrate, um, there's a lot of different, one suggestion is uh, Magenta Pixie, her two books. Uh, She has a wonderful integration for that and it's in her second book. 
uh, it's like a twin flame. And it, I've been doing this with my friend. My friend actually does it with me. She's like my facilitator. It's good to have a facilitator. And we go into a dark forest and we have guides with us at guardians and we pick them. Uh, sometimes I have a phoenix or I have a dragon and believe me, I need them or a wolf or, and we go into this dark forest, we go into a cottage and you, th you, you ask your shadow self to come forth and then you ask it what lesson it needs to teach you. You thank it. And you want to integrate the emotion into your matrix. In, not integrate the emotion, but the actual act of integrating it into your matrix. And when it comes forth, you have to kind of think in your third eye, kind of just think uh, images will come. And certain emotion, it would bring certain emotions up, it, memories from the past, inner child stuff. And then... You feel the feeling and then you ask it what it needs to teach you and it's usually transmuting it to love and light to, to compa anger and to compassion and you end up um, in a field when you're finished when it's truly integrated you're in a field uh, with butterflies and <laughs> yeah, it sounds kind of hokey but it actually works and we've did we, I've done a lot of it, and I had a really, really intense one uh, where literally I was crying my eyes out, holding my pillow, and I was imagining the phoenix holding one arm and the the uh, dragon holding another and the wolf in back of me pushing me. I had to go into a cauldron and just completely burn away all these feelings and transmute them. And I didn't want, it, it was, it, I had to cut off, my my parents have both passed away. My mother recently passed last year, and my father when I was 11. Significant, significant. I thought I was over it as far as you know, the grief part, but I wasn't. I was holding on, so I clipped it away, the ribbon, cut that, cut the ancestral kind of thing. And then I had to transmute that, and it was so hard. Most of them I don't cry. There is maybe like three that I really cry, but this was like so intense. So we don't know how much uh, things are really deep inside um, that have to be transmuted. But the shadow works good because not only when you get rid of it, you actually lose weight because you hold weight in. Your emotions sometimes uh, go in and you hold that. So I've actually lost weight in my stomach. And all, when all those emotions are, bra I feel lighter, and I'm, I'm more spiritual kiss are coming in. So shadow works really good. So that's magenta pixie, uh, p i x i e. Get both her books. Uh, they're on Amazon. They're very cheap. I think they're like ten or twenty bucks. So Laura, I'm sorry, I I was talking so much. So how do you feel about the shadow work? I'm all about the shadow work. Um... I mean, when we shine a light on our unconscious self, it helps us to be the multidimensional beings that we are. It's what we uh, deny or what we don't give attention to that deserves attention that, you know, kind of keeps us stuck. It, it unconsciously shows up as physical symptoms. So our health is impacted. Um, and, you know, like you were mentioning, you know, you were able to lose weight just from doing, you know, the inner work because of what you were holding on to. And, you know, if we think about it, we're 70% or something like that, uh, made of water. And the thought forms that we have, whether they're conscious or unconscious, um, create the frequency uh, tones in our physical body. You know, it, it's the tone in our voice reflects how we're feeling, you know, on a day-to-day -day level. Um, I'm all about the inner work. I, I, I think that's where it's at. It's where you deprogram. It's where you recognize negative patternings, unconscious behaviors, it's where you shine a light on, you know, what you're inspired by, what you're passionate about, what you, um, what your inner calling is really. Uh, and, you know, as you were talking about money, it's like, you know, we have to, you know, really re look at wh where, where does our self-worth lie and how can we find a balance in it so that, you know, it's not just giving, 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 
you know, and, and people who complain about it, it's like, okay, then do the hours and hours and hours of research. Nobody's asking you or forcing you, you know, but if, if you think it's worth your while, isn't that healthier to invest in? Isn't that making a statement to yourself that, you know, this is worthwhile compared to maybe investing in something that feeds into a program? It's like, we're not out of the money system yet. Eventually we won't be. And those greater values are, are, are going to be what um, ends up remaining, uh, you know, what we value most. And uh, yeah, so, you know, looking at those unconscious things of, okay, well, um, th this is work, this is truth, this is um, your passion, but what 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 do you want to create for yourself um in exchange you know so, so that there's an energetic balance between what you give and you know what you receive and so doing that kind of shadow work is important i mean the thing is like people are choosing light and dark you know or the feminism approach or the masculine way the patriarchal way why can't we just integrate all of it and just be whole again recognizing that um you know, the more we can actually merge these energies instead of choose one over the other is is how we're going to dredge up and purge out the stuff that has uh, held us captive to only certain aspects of ourselves without the total experience. So doing the shadow work means, okay, you're going to shine a light on what's unconscious. And that can only lead to positive results. Um, not only transformations, but realignment with uh, the stuff, you know, that's truly important. And... Um, you know, getting to the core of uh, the belief systems that your body's in agreement with, you know, because that's what physical symptoms show us. There's something that you're believing that your body is not in resonance with. And so it's going to show up and it's going to try and get your attention. But if you look at that as a negative or as a flaw or as a ailment, you know, are you really giving yourself the chance to look at the root of what it's actually trying to say? And so, you know, shadow work is crucial for our ability to be healthy, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, and you know, to me, that's, if, if there was any church that, that would be like a good place to go into communion with yourself, you know, set aside the sacred space, uh, to, to really get to know yourself. Cause that self knowledge, um, is the key to like liberation. Cause the thing is, um, you know, integrity is, 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 is not something that we're taught. It's something that I think we all really want to live by, but when we're taught to be addicted to things and taught to adopt certain programmings, it goes against that and our body revolts against it. It doesn't like that. So yes, there's transhumanism agendas and different ways to bypass that through the use of technology to get that instant gratification. But you know, if, if you were to strip oneself of those things, would your body be in agreement to it? Probably not. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it helps us, you know, recognize that quest to be a fully conscious, spiritual, compassionate being for the self and for others doing the inner work. Um, and when we throw that to belief systems and religions and, you know, what's going on in the political world, we sort of deny ourselves the opportunity to really discover, you know, the inner healer, the inner politician, the inner judge, the inner, um, you know, the, the things that really count at the end of the day. Um, because ultimately it's our physical vessel that we need to serve so that we can be in service to others instead of something that we were taught so that we build some self-esteem around it and create these false insecurities because we can't live up to it that create this muck that we need to wade through and we need to address to uh, really experience what ascension's all about. I don't see how we can possibly ascend without doing the shadow work. Um, and it's that integration of light and dark that allows us to consciously birth and create our reality. Just like you were saying, you have an idea, you've got to take action. You know, you can't just have a philosophy without having it become a way of life or else it's kind of useless. It's just a great thought. Wow, that sounds really, that's true, absolutely. We have one last question, and we're almost done. I can't believe how fast it went. Um, Are you doing the Neutron question? Yeah. Okay. The Neutron question is, Laura, Laura, are fifth or higher dimensions helping us humans on third density from the attacks from negative third and fourth interdimensional entities? 
Yeah, well, the 5D Ascension timeline supposedly got hijacked, and uh, when we look at, like, a five-dimensional level of energy, what is that really? I mean, it corresponds to our chakras, and it corresponds to higher harmonic universes. And when we look at the fifth chakra, it's the throat chakra. It's, it's the ability to feel empowered and to utilize your voice, to use your voice in a way um, where you begin to understand that's your creative tool. The things that you energize, the thoughts that you have, the things that you say to people, um, the, the, the things that you allow yourself to recognize as far as synchronicities go, and you, uh, you know, give yourself the capacity to answer to it. So in a 3D world where it's more of a lower chakra experience of power, uh, status, wealth, or no wealth, we're either suffering or we're thriving, but like, what laws are those based on? They're based on a matrix program. When we go into like a 5D, we're starting to recognize like uh, voice, sound, frequency. Um, what is the quality of our words? How, 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 how are we representing ourselves in the world? Are we a product? Are we an advertisement? Are we enabling an agenda through what we are choosing to embody? Or are we being true to ourselves? And how does that change the condition of our thought forms and the words that we choose to share with each other? So getting in alignment with 5D energy is getting in alignment with the power of your voice, the power of your words, the power of your thoughts, the powers of your intention, and taking that back and saying, you know what, I don't have to give that over to a timeline I don't want to be a part of. I don't have to give that over to an agenda. I don't have to give that over to even the surface layers of what one is seeing play out on the world stage. Um, you know, being at the mercy of what you hear in the news as far as how that determines your future. It's like, okay, you can just turn that off and just spend some time in nature and there's a huge difference between those two worlds and the trajectory of those two courses. Um, so yeah, I mean, when one thinks, well, how can I start to step into a 5D level of consciousness? The power of your voice, you know, and, and doing the inner work to make sure that any unconsciousness that exists in there is not enabling a agenda or a timeline that you don't wish to be on. You know, you change your belief system about it. It doesn't mean that you disbelieve it or say it's just an illusion. You just say, I don't have a contract with that. I'm breaking my agreement with it. I'm divorcing it. It's a bad partner. I want true love. <laughs> you know, it's like saying, I, I'm, I don't want to be abused anymore. I don't want to be used anymore. And, you know, it's tricky when a person's unconscious and they don't want to look at this stuff. But, uh, you know, anybody who's like, okay, well, I don't want to look at this stuff, but I want to be, you know, in a higher dimensional earth. Um, use your intentions like a GPS, put in the instructions to your creative energy, and then sit back and let your inner voice tell you when to turn right and left and start to trust yourself. And, uh, and then you'll steer your way out of the BS and, and, uh, and the stuff that you don't, you know, really want, because you'll start to see the synchronicities begin to line up with that greater intention versus the things that um, either validate or destroy whatever worth you put towards a purpose that you were um, taught or what you inherited from your parents. Um, and that's how you heal DNA damage because the root of any DNA damage starts with the energy and the beliefs. You know, if you're high strung and super stressed, yeah, you're going to have heart issues and yeah, that could be genetically passed on to you, but what's the root of it? What is the behavior pattern that creates that physical ailment? So it's just really taking charge. Like even if it's fake it till you make it, you just, so, you so we are what we're looking for. It's us. I would definitely say so. Absolutely. And it's time for Mike. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> uh, I think we've got about four minutes left. And Laura, I want you to tell everyone who's listening. And we've got, uh, oh, my God, thousands and thousands of people out there listening. Uh, where you're going to be, what you're going to do, and uh, all that awesome. good stuff. Great. Well, I'll be speaking at Contact in the Desert. That's June 1st to the 4th. And I'll be doing a workshop and lecture and maybe a little bit more than that. Just not quite sure yet. Uh, there's the New Living Expo in San Mateo, California. And that's at the end of April. Um, and a week before that, I will be uh, hosting a retreat with two others uh, in the Redwood Forest. And um, if that any of it sounds exciting, just you know, check my Facebook page. I, I post links constantly, ways to sign up. Um, you know, information, you know, the dates and, you know, what I'll be presenting and what I'll be doing. So you just keep an eye on my Facebook page, but there's, you know, some big events and, uh, I'll be in Hawaii, but I don't think there's any signups left for that. 
but uh yeah some of this should be streamed live there there should be free material coming out of it but if you're able to make it you know there's nothing better than gathering and having community and uh you know getting to know people face to face so yeah new living expo and contact in the desert are uh the big ones in end of april san mateo california I'll be doing a few things and then contact in the desert and the rest of it. I would just, yeah, keep up with my Facebook page and I'll have my website, Laura back online probably in the next week. Sounds wonderful. Laura, it's just, it's always fun to have you on. It's always educational. I'm really glad you could come and spend the evening with us again. You always give us a charge. Uh, so yeah, listen, I want to wish you good luck for the summer and, uh, I hope everything works out with all these meetings that you're going to have and retreats. God, it sounds like you're going to be one busy lady. I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's always great to be on this show and sending a lot of love to all of you. So thank you. Uh, we love you back, kid. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Good night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, uh, Julia, what about that guest you were talking to me about? Any any progress with that? Oh, for oh, I haven't um, scheduled a date yet. Okay. Okay. Well, we we have next week and onward available if you want to uh, put someone in. Sounds How's, like a plan. I got a hey. few people. I got. Uh, someone that wrote a very interesting book and about a lot of different um, she she worked at a fair uh, renaissance fair and Uh met many many stories about a lot of interesting paranormal stuff and then I have another guy who's a producer that did a movie on Mount Adams Uh and he has two books on the inner earth so those are the two people I'm working on so awesome that sounds good now, uh, I, I think we're still on the air. I want to wish everyone a great weekend, a great week. God bless. And listen, we'll see you next week. And uh, maybe we'll have some interesting things to talk about from our uh, friends, Oli. 